Hey guys, so I know it has been a while since I've posted anything on this channel, but life has been crazy. Um, as I've mentioned in a couple of my previous videos, um, my wife and I are, you know, in the process of adopting and matching and everything. And, you know, we our son was here last month for a couple of weeks and everything. And things have just been crazy. Being a dad is just crazy. Um, you know, life is definitely changing. So I just haven't had time to really, like, sit down and post anything on this channel, as I've said before. Um, if you guys are interested in our adoption journey, that's something that we started a separate channel on, so I will link it down below, Life with the Lopez's, if you guys want to kind of keep track of, you know, our adoption journey and parenting journey and everything, we've been posting on that channel um, a little bit. So this one has, has been a little bit neglected. I feel like I haven't, you know, stopped reading. I've definitely been reading. Um, so I'm updating you guys today on everything that I've read from the last... Um, wrap up that I did, which I thought was November, was October um, or November, but now that I'm looking back at the videos, the last wrap up that I posted was August. So I'm going to be updating you guys on everything that I read from September to December, um, and then I'm going to obviously start doing the regular monthly wrap ups and update you guys. You know, on January, that wrap up is coming very soon because I read five books in January, which I'm really excited about. Um, but yeah, I have I think 14 or 15 books that I read those last four months of the year so I'm going to stop rambling and I'm going to get through this list very quickly um, because I don't want this video to be super super long. Um, the first book that I have or the, the next book that I have that I completed in September I think it was was Yoke by Mary H.K. Choi which is a I believe this is considered new adult. New adult contemporary follows these two sisters who have a strained relationship um, they're complete opposites, and one of them ends up getting diagnosed with cancer. So that kind of forces them to come together, work together, think, you know, work through their issues and everything that they've had in the past. Um, I absolutely love this one. Um, this was one of my favorite books of the year for last year from 2021. And I think Mary H.K. Choi is just wonderful. Permanent Record I absolutely loved. And I still have to read Emergency Contact, which I own. Um, but yeah, she's, she's becoming one of my favorite contemporary authors, and I thought this one was a wonderful, wonderful story. Um, after that, I read an arc that I got from Net Galley, which was You'd Be Home Now by Kathleen Glasgow, which is a YA contemporary. Um, follows our main character, Emery, who is, is part of this family who's very wealthy in this small town. They're one of like the founding fathers or founding peoples in this town. So she's very well known. Her family has kind of that reputation, but her older brother has this kind of bad reputation because he's involved in you know, illegal sub substances and that kind of thing. So she ends up going to a party with her brother. They end up getting in this car after her brother had allegedly taken these drugs and they end up having an accident and killing one of the passengers in the car. So the story revolves around kind of every the aftermath of all of it. Everything that's happening to the brother, everything that happens to, to Emery, how her family's being viewed, how you know substance abuse um, is being viewed in this town because it's not just affecting this family but affecting this entire town. I really, really ended up enjoying this one. I'd never read anything by Kathleen Glasgow before and I've, I've seen some books and everything by them around so I definitely want to check out more by this author after reading this one. I gave this a four out of five stars I believe it was just because it felt a little bit younger YA at the beginning even though it did end up becoming a little bit darker toward the end. I really really ended up enjoying this one. Um, the next book that I read was Hexes and Hemlines by Juliet Blackwell. This is the third book in the Witchcraft Mystery series. Um, and this one was just okay. This one follows, you know, our main character. She is the owner of a thrift store. She's a witch and she solves mysteries. And every book kind of follows a different mystery. She obviously uses her magical abilities to solve these mysteries. I really loved the first two books. Um, but this one just felt okay for me. I'm not sure what it was missing, but it just, I don't know. I just, I thought it was fine. I will continue on the series because I own a few more of these books. So I will keep reading um, that series and hopefully it ends up getting better. Um, after that, I read The Inheritance of Orquídea Divina by Soraya Cordova and absolutely loved this one. This was another 5 out of 5 stars for me. I think this was one of my favorites of the year. I can't remember if I put it on my list of favorites of the year, but it was up there. It was it was definitely a great book. Follows our main character, or, or kind of our main character, Orquídea Divina, who is going to die 
she knows she's going to die um, and she ends up sending a letter to every single one of her family members to come and collect their inheritance. So this is a magical realism story. Obviously there's a magical element or a magical twist to this whole inheritance that she's trying to give her family. Some people think she's crazy and they don't want to follow her instructions and some people do. So then you end up having some of the family members start dying in like these tragic events um, while other family members who followed her instructions end up living so they're trying to you know they're they're solving this whole thing of what's going on what the inheritance is what this whole you know instructions that Okita gave her family what this has to do with anything I, it's very vague I'm giving you very vague um, synopsis of this book but this is one that I feel like people should go in blindly I had absolutely no idea what this book was about when I went into it and thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this one um, then we have probably one of my least favorite books of the year. <laughs> that is White Fox by Sarah Faring. This is a YA mystery book that follows these two sisters who are sent away from their childhood home. Um, their mother passes away and then they end up kind of years later coming back to the home um, to solve the mystery of their mother's death. And yeah, I mean this one, I don't know about this one you guys. This one just was, it felt very convoluted it felt really long for no reason like it was unnecessarily long um there were points in there that i was just confused with the mystery and what was going on with some of these characters and the plot and i just i don't know i for some reason just didn't really end up loving this one as much as i did her debut novel 10th girl which i feel like is also polarizing um from the reviews that i read people tend to end up you know eh, feeling mixed about her writing this was definitely not my favorite of hers i will definitely give her you know more opportunities in the future depending on how intriguing her future novels sound but this one one of my least favorites i did not like this one at all um after that i read death caster by cinder williams china this is the fourth book in the shattered realms series um and this one again i can't really get into a synopsis with this one because it's the fourth book in a series that is a companion series to the seven realm series so it's technically the eighth book in this world um but this one i really enjoyed i loved where things ended um but again when i reviewed the book prior to this one the worst thing that i did was picking these pick these books up on audiobook because i just couldn't get into them me fantasy audiobooks just they just don't mix i don't really like listening to, to fantasy on audiobooks because there's so much going on with the world and the characters and the politics and all these multiple points of views and everything that just on audio just for me doesn't work um so yeah i feel like if i would have read this in physical form i would have ended up loving it a lot more than i did i still ended up enjoying the end of this series and giving it a four out of five stars but i mean if i end up rereading the series at some point i'm going to make sure that i pick these all up in physical form because i've I read, like I said, the first six books in physical form and absolutely loved them, but the last two, I just couldn't really get into them. But again, it was the audio. It wasn't the actual story um, itself. Um, after that, I read Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke by Eric LaRocca. This is a very, very tiny book that I absolutely ended up loving. This was one of my favorite books of 2021 as well. This is told in, like... I am an email conversations back and forth between our two main characters, um, but it's I don't I don't I don't really I don't know how to explain this book because it's so tiny that I don't really want to give anything away. So there's these two women start having these conversations through Craigslist. Craigslist. One of them posts this item that she's looking to sell. It's like a family heirloom, and then this other woman responds to her, and they kind of get into this conversation that slowly becomes gr to grow a little bit darker and a little bit more sinister and I absolutely loved this one. This is one that I read in one sitting, you know, obviously it's it's super tiny, you can read in one sitting, but I could not go to sleep without finishing this book because I needed to know what was going to happen and what 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 was going to transpire in these emails and these conversations between these two women. I thought it was absolutely fantastic and absolutely loved this book. Um the next book that I read was The Silent Patient by Alex Michael Michaelides. Um, this one is an adult mystery thriller, follows our main character who murders her husband and then stops talking and then doesn't say a word after that. Then you have this kind of um, psychotherapist who goes into the institution where she's being held years later 
um, and becomes interested in her case and trying to figure out why this woman stopped talking because um, nobody really knows what happened. She murders her husband and, and she doesn't say anything else afterwards. So, you know, obviously they want to know why she murdered her husband, but she's not speaking. So this kind of follows that storyline. Um, I thought it was really interesting. I think I gave this one like a four stars or so. I haven't heard the greatest things about the companion novel that this one follows, um, The Maidens. So I might end up skipping on The Maidens because I will leave The Silent Patient as it is as a standalone. Um, but really enjoyed this one. As I was reading it, I was really intrigued with the mystery. It's really easy to get through and the writing style and everything. So this was definitely a good book. Not great, um, but definitely enjoyable. Again, I really enjoy mystery thrillers. So this was one that was really fun. Um, then I picked up The Lion Game by Ruth Ware. I am slowly trying to get through all of Ruth Ware's novels because I own them all. Um, and I really, really enjoy her writing style. This one I went in completely blindly because the book Nowhere on the Outside has a synopsis of this story at all. So I had no idea what I was getting into. Um, it follows this group of women who apparently are being suspected of a murder in their small town. They all kind of move away and then after a while they kind of all come back to the small town when a body emerges um, and they kind of, you know, all come together. They're like The body is connected to this murder that apparently they're involved in and, you know, a lot of things ensue which is, again, it's very hard to explain. This one, I didn't end up enjoying as much as I did some of, of Ruth Swear's other, other, other novels. The mystery was intriguing, but it wasn't absolutely amazing. It didn't blow me away like I wanted it to, but still really interesting. It really still kept me hooked throughout the entire thing and still really enjoyed this one. Really want to, um, like I said, continue to read more of Ruth Ware's novels because I own them and I'm really enjoying her writing style and everything. So there's that. Um, the next book I read was also one of my favorites of the year, and that was Dune by Frank Herbert. I absolutely loved this one. This one, again, it's a hit or miss for a lot of people. It's an adult sci-fi novel. It's more heavier science fiction, follows our main character, Paul Atreides, um, as him and his family are sent to lead this new planet um, and go harvest um, spice. It's the most powerful or most wanted substance in this universe. Um, you have kind of this thing going on between them and the native inhabitants of this new planet, the Fremen and everything. Um, it's, it's a very complicated kind of plot. There's a lot of things going on with this one, um, which I'm not going to get into the nuances of this whole world and the politics and everything, but I ended up really loving this one. I watched the movie with my wife, um, and ended up absolutely loving it. That's why I ended up picking up the book because I really wanted to get into this world again and absorb this world and really find out what happens after the events of the movie. Um, so really happy I ended up picking up this one. Again, it was one of my favorites of the year. I gave this one like a four and a half stars or so, but really excited about continuing the rest of this series because I had never read like heavy adult science fiction before, but really, really ended up loving this one. Um, I thought it was fantastic. And after that, I finally picked up A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. I'm really excited I ended up um, kind of starting this series in 2021 because it was on my list of books that I really wanted to read. Um, it follows our main character, Kel, who can travel between Londons. He has this magical coat that allows him to kind of go between red, gray, black, white London. Um, and he is in this first book trying to take an item back to Black London, I believe it is. He's accompanied by um, one of the other characters, Lila, who is helping him kind of return this item in this world. Um, really interesting, really good introduction to this world and to the story. Um, I thought it was interesting. I didn't think it was absolutely amazing. It didn't blow me away. I think I gave this like three and a half, four stars or so. Um, really solid beginning to this series. Really enjoyed it. Afterwards, I read The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. This one was one that I picked up on audiobook. Um, while me and my wife were on a road trip and ended up, you know, listening to this one while we were on our trip. And we like listening to kind of these like mystery, these quicker like mystery thrillers um, on car rides. I think they're really intriguing. But it follows our main character who moves into this town, um, ends up kind of falling in love, meeting this man and falling in love, moving in. And this man is obviously keeping a secret. This is very loosely based on the whole premise of Jane Eyre. If you guys have read Jane Eyre and know kind of what's happening, this is kind of like the same kind of plot story that's happening in Jane Eyre. 
but obviously set in modern times in this modern mystery. Really enjoyed this one, gave it four stars. Um, I thought it was a very, very intriguing mystery, um, very intriguing plot. I really, really enjoyed this one and thought it was really fun. Um, and then I read The Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab's second book in the Shades of Magic series, which I really enjoyed. I didn't like this one as much as the first one. This one follows more like pirates on ships and this competition that's going on in this world like it feels completely different than the first one i thought the the second book was going to continue this whole plot of these worlds and this item that's being taken you know i thought it was going to revolve more around that but this one feels like a you know it's set in the same world but feels completely like a different story and is vaguely connected with the events of the first one there's a lot of setup i feel like to the events that are going to happen in the third book which i have not i haven't started yet but um, I thought this one was okay. I gave it three stars. I think it was really intrigued to see how this series is going to end again because this has a lot of setup for the last book um, and I've heard absolutely incredible things about the last book so really really want to try and read that one fairly soon so I don't forget a lot of the things that are going on in this world and with these characters before I pick that one up but I ended up reading that one. Um, the next book that I read or finished in 2021 was Gay Girl Good God, the story of who I was, um, who God has always been by Jacqueline Hill Perry. This is a nonfiction Christian book um, told by Jacqueline Perry, her testimony and everything. Um, this is one that obviously, you know, some people are going to agree on. Some people aren't going to agree on the themes in this story at all. If you guys are Christian, you guys are probably going to be okay with the themes. If you're not, you guys probably are going to absolutely, you know, hate this kind of story and hate this kind of you know, these themes and this, this topic that it talks about, but it's up to you if you guys want to read this one or not. Go on to Goodreads, check out the synopsis. If it's something that's interesting to you, definitely pick it up. I thought it was great, um, but if it's not, then, you know, pass on it. It's not the end of the world. Um, and then the last book that I ended up finishing in 2021 was The Reptile Room by Lemony Snicket, the second book in the series of Unfortunate Events. I'm slowly rereading the first few books in this series because I stopped I think it was at book like six or seven and never continued on with the series so I'm slowly going back on audiobook and kind of just re-listening to these books because they're super short anyways um to get myself re-familiarized with this series so that I can continue to read them um and finally finish off the series hopefully in 2021 so I ended up picking up this audiobook because it was short and sweet and really enjoyed this one I think I gave it, again, another four stars or so. I really like the series of Unfortunate Events. I think it's a great series for kids and for adults alike. So, um, yeah, that's it for all of the books that I read at the end of 2021, between October and December. Um, I hope this isn't long and rambly, but either way, let me know what you guys what your favorite books were. Don't let me know everything that you guys read in 2021, but at least what your favorite books are. If you guys read any of the books that I read as well, and you guys have thoughts on them, please let me know. I would love to know. And I will update you guys, like I said, very soon on a January update and hopefully get into somewhat of a regular schedule on this channel, but we will see what happens. Thank you guys all again for watching and I will see you all next time.